My name is Indira Samarasekra. I am a member of the board of the Asia Pacific Foundation. Uh, I spent 10 years as president of the University of Alberta and I'm currently a senior advisor at Bennett Jones. When I was uh, a young academic, uh, certainly uh, the work that I was doing in materials engineering uh, exposed me to the uh, great strength of Japan. And Japan was a, obviously a, a very strong economy, one that I think had risen uh, in, uh, in, in size and might. And there was a, a, a growing awareness, certainly among those in uh, the manufacturing business, that it was important to be able to go to Japan, uh, to meet with people, uh, and to um, be able to understand how Japan was succeeding in the manufacturing business. At the same time, we had a number of Japanese graduate students who would come to Canada and spend time here, but we never really had very many uh, Canadians, uh, North Americans, who would go to Japan um, as, uh, as exchange students. And I think that was unfortunate because uh, the best way to learn about a country was uh, through uh, immersing in that culture and better understanding it. Having said that, there were a number of young Canadians um, at that time who would go to Japan to teach English as a second language. So it was very clear to us that they were very keen to learn English and be able to communicate with us while we were you know, more ambivalent, if you will, about the importance of, of having similar competencies. Uh, fast forward you know, 20 years, um, I, when I became a vice president of research and then subsequently president of the University of Alberta, uh, China's economy uh, just simply had taken off, uh, mid-90s, uh, late-90s, and we started seeing um, a steady increase in the number of Chinese students who were studying um, in University of Alberta at the undergraduate and graduate level. Um, and we also started to see an increasing number of students who were sufficiently curious, uh, beginning to be interested in uh, China competencies. So we had students in East Asian uh, studies departments uh, and so on that would go to China and spend time there, but they were by far a minority. And uh, we began to think about how we could build that because there was no question in the early 2000s, uh, we could see the importance of China and uh, for that matter, all of the uh, Asian countries uh, in the future and the need to become more proficient in engaging with these countries. And there is absolutely no question that we are at an epic transition uh, in history. We've had a Western European uh, domination for 500 years uh, in terms of de you know, democratic governments, in terms of uh, you know, ec economic might, in terms of global influence, in terms of politics, in terms of uh, just thought leadership. And now we are seeing the rise uh, of China, uh, not for the first time in history, but perhaps in, uh, perhaps in the last five, seven, six, seven hundred years. And the rise of China uh, means that the future uh, economic growth opportunities is going to be in Asia. So if you live in North America, then you should be uh, really knowledgeable uh, about uh, those countries, uh, be prepared to learn the languages, but more importantly, to be culturally uh, proficient, comfortable, so that you were able to engage uh, uh, people in China, uh, in Japan, in Korea, uh, Indonesia, India, uh, for that matter, all of Asia in the future. Because if you look at the relative, uh, first of all, the uh, populations, there's you know 1.3 billion people in China, uh, 1.2 billion plus or so in, in, in India. India in particularly uh, has one of the largest uh, uh, youth demographics, 500 million or so Indians under the age of 25. And so when you look forward to 15, 20 years when you as a young person are going to be uh, in the, at the height of your career, uh, these are the countries that are going to have the uh, job opportunities, uh, the growth prospects, uh, and, and the ability to help grow the global economy. So my advice would be uh, immerse yourself as much as you can uh, while you're in Canada in a subject matter that would educate you um, on the, uh, the, the Asian countries. Uh, secondly, absolutely travel. Travel for pleasure. 
uh, uh, find an internship, if you can take a, a term off from uh, university education or even in high school to go in the summer uh, and spend time in China would be incredibly valuable. And I do know that many universities and schools are increasingly providing opportunities for students to do this. And it's all a matter of students showing an interest and, and uh, jumping on board. So the future is East.